Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Dr. Yagan, yeah, am I saying your name right? T tell me if you were king for a day and you could rewrite America's tax code, tell me the three changes you would make. Um, number one, I would equalize uh, labor and capital tax burdens at the top. There are a couple ways of doing that. The billionaire minimum income tax is one that would move in that direction. I won't rehash um, those details. Um, Senator Johnson actually talked about a corporate tax integration type. What's number two? Sure. Um, uh, number two, part of closing the labor and capital um, uh, uh, disparity is closing the Gingrich Edwards loophole. And number three is ending um, abuse of tr tr trusts. So the estate tax has been eviscerated. Um, many of those, you take assets that you know are worth a lot. Right now, they're purportedly worth a little because you haven't taken your company public. You put them into a trust. It do, explodes. Do you, do you support a wealth tax? Do you know what I mean by wealth tax? I do know what you mean by wealth tax. The billionaire minimum income tax taxes uh, income, and that, I think, is the way forward in that space. Well, let me, let me be a little more precise. Do, do, you, do you think appreciation of assets that are not sold, unrealized gain, should be taxed? I think you should have to prepay tax on it that will eventually be due at sale, gift, or bequest. What do you mean prepay the tax? Sure. So um, if I have uh, $5 billion of unrealized capital gains, I have $5 billion of taxable income, and I'm currently paying $1.5 billion on that, so that's a 15% overall tax well, rate. Well, no, let's make, no, 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 let's don't complicate this. I want to understand sure. what you're saying. Let, let's suppose um, a, a, an American owns a piece of real estate they inherited from their father uh, or their mother. And um, it was, when they inherited it, they got step up in basis, it's worth $100,000. And all of a sudden the interstate came through and the property is now worth a million dollars if they sell it, but they don't plan to sell it. They're going to leave it to the kids. Do, do you think that that, that that American should have to pay tax on the unrealized gain, the increase in value? In general, no. At that, at that level of wealth, for example, housing. You think only wealthy people should? At the very top, it's hard to tax, you know. Well, but, but let me be sure what I understand what you're sure. saying. All right, let's suppose that's not just an average American. Let's suppose that's an American. What do you define as rich? In the minimum income tax, it's $100 million of wealth or more. Okay, the so you, you think if you're really wealthy, you should have to pay a tax on your unrealized gain? I think you should have to partially prepay if you're liquid, if you have, if you have liquidity to pay. Do, 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 and you, then, think, do you think somebody... Uh -huh. Why, why can't you economists answer questions? Should someone, should any American have to pay tax on unrealized gain? Why can't you just answer me? Yes, there are some who should. Who? On the ultra wealthy who have liquidity should prepay some tax. What if that? they don't have liquidity? They should not have to pay and they will owe at sale, bequest, or... Um, gift. So if you have cash, you ought to have to pay, but if you don't, you don't have to pay? To prepay. I have a, in my t testimony, there are examples of how this works so that you can preserve incentives to build a new company, take it public. Okay. While what do also you think, Dr. McBride? Do you think we should start taxing unrealized gains? <clears throat> and what do you think that'll do to the economy? Well, I, I have several concerns about the approach, uh, the first of which is it's completely untested. Uh, it's never been tried in this country. We have a hundred, more than 100 years of history with the income tax. And Europe's tried it, haven't they? No. Uh, they've tried wealth taxes. Yeah. Their, their experience with wealth out? taxes has been bad. How did been, that turn out? Uh, bad. Um, it Why resulted that? in a lot of taxpayers exiting the country, for, for one thing, in France, for instance, other uh, countries that have tried it. 
um, and you sudden, suddenly lose a big chunk of your tax base that you're trying to tax there. Um, we, we have that option in this country as well. Um, the, the result has been that most of those countries in Europe that have uh, tried a wealth tax have rolled them back, yeah. including France, uh, because they were administratively challenging. Uh, the, the basic challenge is trying, is what you're describing, trying to uh, value um, um, assets without real market tra transactions. Uh, so this is a va valuation dispute. Um, it means the, we get the IRS uh, engaged in yet another challenge. They're currently doing this with the estate tax. They, those estates um, um, that are, that, that are um, subject to the estate tax, those valuation episodes one, can go years and years and years. More. Can I have 30 more seconds? Proceed. Um, Dr. Is it Clausing? Clausing? Yes. Yeah. Why, 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 do you, why do you and Dr. Yagen, why do y'all want to punish wealthy people? I think I can speak for both of us that we're not interested in punishing anyone. We're interested well, you're in having interested a, a in taxing the hell out of system. them more than anybody else. I think why, why, the what makes you think that what makes you think that making tax policy on the basis of of class or status makes sense? I think it's a very American phenomena that throughout the history of the income tax, we have valued progressivity, and our current income tax does that. Um, we used to rely on things like tariffs to raise revenue, tariffs or regressive consumption taxes that disproportionately hurt the poor. Like we believe in this country that those with a greater ability to pay should pay more of the burden, um, and that's part of what a healthy capitalism does. It enables... Uh, people to gain from things like trade and technological change and business innovation and to contribute a little more to the fiscal system when they're very successful in doing so. And I think that that's a very legitimate way to structure the tax system. Can, I, can I ask you a question? Yes. Why do you think so many wealthy people aren't leaving New York City? New York City is, uh, you know, an, an incredible city of innovation, uh, immigration. Yeah, but why are so many wealthy yeah. people leaving? I think there are, there are big advantages to living near centers of entrepreneurial activity, and we see that on the, on the West You think they're well. leaving to be nearer to centers of entrepreneurial activity, do you? Well, I don't think there are a lot of people, you know, fleeing uh, New York City. That New York City has... Sure they are. There are thousands. I mean, there have been study after study after study. Why are so many wealthy people leaving New York City? I think there's an enormous number of wealthy people who are in New York City and continue. Well, but why are so many leaving? I, I can't speak to why particular people I can leave. tell you why. It's taxes. You know that as well as I do. It's taxes. I think if you look at the economic... Some of it's crime, but most of it is taxes. <laughs> well, you people know... People vote with their feet. The same reason that people are leaving California and moving to Austin. If, if you look at California, it's one of the most successful economies in the world, and it continues to be so. It attracts people. But they're losing well. people. I don't think it's in any danger of, of decline, nor is New York City. Um, and, and these are okay. very vibrant places. I don't think we're going to ever agree. Reasons. Yeah. I don't think we're going to ever agree. Um, but I appreciate the time of all three of you. Thank you. To be fair, there are also our people moving the other way. There are people who move to New York. They just don't all leave from New York. It's a two-way street in and out of New York, and it's a two-way street between Austin and California. People leave Texas and go to California, and some of them do very well. Well, that's true, Sheldon, but I can show you study after study after study, as you well know, and as the professor knows, that shows that people are leaving high-tax states and moving to low-tax states. All you have to do is well, they also the, leave. Uh, all you have to do is look at the demographics. Take, pick the nine states that have, say, a state income tax, and compare that or that don't have a state income tax, and compare that to that to the states that do. It's called tax avoidance, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly legal. It People have different preferences. You know, I, if you look at where immigrants choose to live in the United States, they often go to those same places that you were talking about. You know, so I, I do think that, you know, there's movement in, in both directions. Yeah, yeah but, but here's, yeah. What, here, here's my point. Mm -hmm. Here's what I think rational people do, and here's what I bet all three of you would do, and I bet Sheridan would do I mean, uh, Sheldon would do it because he's a smart guy, okay? If he, if, if he won the lottery tomorrow, 
and won $10 million and paid his taxes and has $6 million left. He's going to at least consider, you are too, moving to Florida because no, they I don't wouldn't. have a state income tax. For the record, no, I wouldn't. Never crossed my mind. <laughs> Well, most rational, well, I don't mean you're irrational, <laughs> so you know that. But, it can but, be quite but, rational to not but, want but to when in you're liquid, But right when you're liquid mm -hmm. and you don't have to pay a, a, a 6% off the top versus 0%, it's a rational economic move, is it not? Um, I, yeah, I, I agree it's rational. I mean, um, I mean the thing about taxes that we're, we're talking about is they're a cost or a price. And so claiming that the, this cost or price doesn't matter is essentially throwing out the very basic law of demand, basics, the basic uh, fundamental um, idea in economics that prices matter, that costs matter. See, see this, this is what this always boils down to, and there's no, there's no way we'll ever agree, okay? But at least two of you believe that government, all things being equal, can spend a dollar better than people can. And 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 I that's that's your your this is America you can believe that. For the record, that's not in their testimony. I just I just don't agree with you. I I think people can spend the dollar better, all things being equal. And and all you have to do if you if you know the history of government, you know that that I'm right. But I don't expect you to agree with me because you're professors. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Sheldon. Always entertaining. Senator Kennedy, thank you so much for being here.